All right, take this thing live. Give me one second. We go to live, and let's see if that works. And it does. Fantastic. Hello, everyone. How are we? All right, let's get. Give me one second to get everything where I need it. We got you. We got you. Perfect. So, yeah, let's let's do this. I want to take this guy, copy and paste it over here. The reason is I want to play around with. I have an idea. I want to see if we can do something with this because I kind of like the way this outline looks. So I want to play around with this. I think we'll kill the inner stroke. Yeah, good. Let's see if we can't make some like little robots or something. Hey, Hellraiser, how's it going, buddy? Sorry, we got a late start tonight, man. My uh, wife got in a got in a car wreck today, so we had to deal with that junk, which is always exciting. But all's well. So. Let's go with this. Let's see. Let's draw with this for a bit. Yeah, it, it, it was one of those. It was more of a fender bender than anything, man. But the it was sort of like a hit and run because the other driver didn't hang around. Just decided they didn't want to deal with it. But luckily, my wife got the um, got the um, a picture of the license plate and everything. So little do they know <laughs> it. Still got reported. You know, and the crazy part about it was, it wasn't a terrible wreck. Had they just chilled out, you know what I mean? It, it, I mean, it would have, you know, no doubt it would have stung, but like, now they're going to get hit with hit and run, essentially. You know, which is a whole nother level of chargers, right? So, really, the whole thing just doesn't make sense. Like, but see, I don't think they realized my wife was quick enough to get a picture. So I think they they probably assumed at the point at that point that they got away scot free, but let me plug in my phone. But you know that's life, right? That's the things we deal with. But jeez, it really is. Like I get it. It sucks, right? Nobody nobody wants to own up to that. Like it's gonna cost you money. It's gonna cost you time, right? But but the fact of the matter is, <laughs> the odds. I mean, getting caught is in running like that is so much worse than just dealing with it but hey you know everybody has to choose their own everybody has to choose their own path you know I, I wouldn't recommend it hey wolf how's it going good to see you over there so I want to show you guys something I, I'm messing around with um, some comic ideas right and because I don't know if you guys were here when I was talking about this I know how great it was but I've been talking about like I'm trying to find something to sort of focus my my ability into right like i'm trying to come up with some ideas or like i'm just sort of trying to um come up with something to do with my talent right other than just draw so today at work i was sort of laying down like prototypes for you know what would be like if i was going to do a comic like the style i would do it in and everything and so i want to sort of elaborate on that style a little bit and see kind of what we come up with i guess um because I'd really like to start getting into creating stuff, something, you know, merchandise, comics, something that would be a use of my ability, if you will. Oh, um, we got a host. Welcome, right, let's, let's play with the Emborn. What's up, buddy? How are you? How is everyone tonight? We're gonna we're gonna play around with this. So this is a stroke of six. Let's go with a stroke of four all the way around. I like four better. Four's a little more manageable. We'll go right here. Good. And then if I wanted to do this, I guess you could almost turn them in like this. I'm doing good. How are you doing tonight? Sorry, we got off to a late start tonight, guys. Um didn't mean to, but it was just sort of one of them days, so I apologize for that. Well, you know, that's the thing, Wolf, is like, I've been, I've been brainstorming, like, I've been brainstorming, and I've been like, okay, you know, I really want to do something with, with 
with my skills, right? Like, I want to do, like, a webcomic. I want to do something. Yeah, like a webcomic, essentially, Wolf. And that's sort of what I'm thinking about. You know what I mean? Like, how would I do a webcomic? Like, I've never sat down and tried to make a comic. So, like, today at work, when I had some time and lunch, I was sitting here playing around with, like, making comic panels and, you know, what my style would sort of look like. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of blend... I'm going to sort of blend, like, what is flat vector, like, true flat vector with sort of, like, pseudo 3D. I think I'm going to... I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm sort of playing around with, like, a style, more of an outline style. Because I think an outline style would lend itself more toward, like, a comic, right? Rather than doing true flat. Like, if we took this here and we copied it over, it's going to be harder to get the representation here if we do it like this, you know? So I think if I do this, I'll probably do, like, more of a, like, a stylized, with sort of a, uh, I don't know. I mean, what do you guys think? A flat style or a stroke style? I'm thinking it'd be fun to kind of mess around with some strokes. Kind of see what kind of trouble we can get into, you know? Let's copy the down, kill the strokes. Go here for a little darker even yet. And then we'll copy and paste these then. See if we can do like shading here or something. How we want to sort of pull this off. And then what we can do is we can even play around with this a bit more. Maybe like this. Um, here, but a little darker. Maybe in this vein here. I want to see what this looks like if we decided to sort of shade this in. Cool. Hmm, that could work. So yeah, tonight's just sort of a, an exploratory, just kind of looking around at some different styles and stuff. If you guys, of course, like always, if you guys have any questions for me, feel free to chime in and let me know. I'm just kind of, I think we're just kind of sort of freestyle tonight, do a little bit of, just do a little bit of this, playing around with this style to see what we can come up with, what kind of... I think the strokes will look cool, right? Because I think strokes lean themselves more toward a comic. You know what I'm saying? As opposed to the flat. Because what I'm thinking about doing is... I think you guys can kind of see here, but it, it's sort of flat, but at the same time, not. And I think I'm, I'm, I want to... Before I really finish something, I want to play around with... Like a style. I want to I wanna nail down a style. Like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And then, once I have that style, then I'll sort of... I think sit down and actually try to come up with something like an actual idea and, and and then come up with like a little story and then come up with like some fonts that I want to use and things like that you know break this and then we'll do the same thing up here I don't know it's just lately I've really been I've really been brainstorming on like and I know I asked the other night on stream and I was asking you guys like what kinds of things would you guys like to see because I really want to, I just want to, I want to come up with some styles and stuff. Hey, Dragon, how's it going, buddy? How are you, sir? See, so you can see, I mean, I don't want to say you can pull off more detail, but you can certainly pull off a more stylized look with outlines than you can, like a flat. I mean, without question, without hesitation. How are you doing tonight, Dragon? And guys, if you're not following Dragon, please do. Uh, really good content creator here on the platform. Super nice guy. Very helpful. Uh, very knowledgeable. Um, check him out if you're not. Please, please. I don't have many folks in here yet, but for those who are, please check out Dragon. I'm good, buddy. I'm good. Um, we're just we're we're just uh, messing around tonight, dude. So I was I was actually just talking about a Dragon. I think what I want to do is I've been toying around with. I don't know if you were in here when we were talking about this the other night, Dragon, but. I really want to find a way to focus my abilities into something, like an actual product, like a comic or something like that. So I've been working on some kids' books. I've been toying with the idea of maybe doing like a webcomic, like coming up with a story idea for like a webcomic and illustrating it or something. You know what I mean? Because I would really like to be able to use my ability to do something with it. And, and so I don't really know what that something is yet. Um... I'm thinking possibly a webcomic, but before I get into that, I want to 
I want to come up with like a style, like that I can say, okay, this is the style I'm going to use, you know, and that, that's kind of where I'm at right now. Because I'd really, at the end of the day, I'd really like to have something that I can say, hey, I made that, you know. Oh yeah, we've just been doing stuff. Kind of messing around. I need you to get with me on Discord, Dragon, on more detail on what you were talking about the other night. When I was in your stream, bud. With the animation you want to do. And I'm hoping Water Bottle stops by tonight so we can test out her animations. Uh, because I had to redo all the commands for those, but hopefully they work out all right. Hopefully, hopefully. Here, back. All right, um, we're going to play around with it. Now, the stroke does resize, right? Yeah, it does resize. So let's just, uh, let's mess with this and kind of see what we can come up with. And then I think what we'll do is once we kind of have the style the way we want it, we'll mess with... I'm making a little robot thing here, by the way, if anyone can't tell. We're just going to play around with it and see what kind of ideas we can come up with, sort of off the cuff. And then I think we're going to go back and we're going to finish the scene we were working on the other night. I think. Which one was it? Was it here? No, this one's done. Um, it was... Which one was it? It was the one with the tree and all that stuff, right? Yeah, right here. So we're going to go back and we're going to finish this one. Um, once we get... Some of this done here. I just gotta come up with what the heck do I want to do. Let's try this and kind of see how this falls. Go to the back. We'll kind of stick this in here like this. What would this look like? But for anyone that's just coming in, we're kind of sketching here. Uh, this is kind of my sketching, if you will. I don't normally sketch, so this is the way that I do thought processes. Alright, let's... Yeah. My brain's been all over the place lately, Born. We've been doing, I've been working on like emotes and for like a mixer elixir and all kinds of stuff. It's been, it's been a, it's been a crazy week and I've had a bunch of commissions and stuff. So it's been kind of, and then of course I've got like personal stuff that I'm actually trying to launch and get off the ground. So it's just been one of them. It's been a good week. It's just been a busy week. Right, let's move this in. Kind of see what this style looks like. Like how far can we push this? And then if we want to shade this, of course, we would just kind of kind of shade it like we would anything else. So come in and, and sort of give it this shape here. And yeah, right about there, I'd say. Cool. Yeah, it's been it's been a long week. Now my wife, she got in a car wreck today, which was fantastic. Um, but it wasn't really her fault, and it, it wasn't a terrible wreck. It was basically a fender bender, but. What made it really interesting was the person that hit her, um, they ran. So, pretty much a hit and run. Um, so we had to deal with that. But, luckily, she got a picture of the license plate and everything. So, it's not gonna, you know, I mean, it's gonna suck. I mean, we gotta deal with it, but it's not gonna be too terrible, at least. Because at least we know who did it. Yeah, she's good. She's good. She's good. Yeah, I mean, it, it she, I mean, she was more, you know, shook up than anything, but I mean... The guy basically hit her, and you know the weird part was the dude got out of the car and everything and checked on her, but then he just took off. But I don't think he realized that she got a picture before he took off, so the cops come and they're like, you know, because I mean, obviously, you, you just took what was a wreck and escalated it a hundredfold, because now, I mean, you're not just going to get a, you know, uh, rear-ending someone, you're going to get a, a hit-and-run charge, so... The whole thing was just kind of weird because it was like, why the heck would you do that? But he obviously had some reason, reason to do it, whether he didn't have an ID or um, insurance, who knows? I mean, you know, everybody has their reasons, but I mean, not a smart thing to do. And then, of course, you know, the license plate checked out. They know right where, the, where it is. So, I mean, not like it's not going to get caught. <laughs> weird. I don't understand that, but then again, I... I'm not the type of person that would hit somebody and run off, so I don't know. I don't know how that works. Alright. But yeah, she's good. I appreciate y'all checking. She's she she's she's pretty tough. She's pretty tough. Alright, so how in the world? try a different shape. We're going to try to hand draw this. And right now, this is pretty much a flat character. We're not really going for much dimension right now. We're pretty much just going for completion at this point. 
I just want to see how this looks. Let's copy this style and paste it. Okay. I like that better. We'll give him some like real pointy, edgy looking feet, and then we'll, we'll just kind of come in here and do a little arm thing. So how was everyone Friday? Pretty good? Uh, we're going to go with this color for now. We're going to copy you, use this style, and go to the back. No complaints. Right on, man. Right on. <sighs> yeah, I kind of like the way that little gap looks, right? I really want to see what I can do for details on this. Because this is not my normal style. But I, I really am trying to, you know, get outside the box a little bit. So, Which is always good. It's nice to sort of push yourself. Do this, and then what we'll do is I think we will obviously shade it. I had a good day other than that. I mean, it was a nice day. It was a busy day, but it was a nice day. We're going to Bush Garden tomorrow with family. We're going to go have a family day tomorrow. Goof off, have some adult beverages, and hang out and just do some stuff. Getting hard to drink. Okay. So did anyone see me stream with my daughter last week? That was fascinating. I tried to convince her to do it again tonight, but she wasn't ready. I've been slowly getting her to try it out. We streamed some music together last week. She had a pretty good time with it. Because I asked her if she wanted to do it again in the night, but she she wasn't ready. I said, okay. Let's go. Let's sort of shade it down like this. Well, <laughs> we didn't actually play an instrument. What we did was, I don't know if anyone's heard of it. There's a game called Drop Mix. And it's essentially a board that you put like cards on. It's actually meant to be a game. Like, you can battle each other, but it has, like, a freestyle mode. So you can just make music with, like, different beats, like, different instruments and stuff like that. Think, like, mixing, if you will. So, the game apparently didn't sell well. It's made by the same people that do, um, Guitar Hero. So, it's been really cheap. So, I picked it up for 30 bucks, and we've been playing it, and we've been having a blast with it. Like, making random songs and stuff. It's pretty cool. Like, we had a good time. We've been having fun with it off-camera, too. Uh, just kind of playing around with, like... Because, like... Okay, it's kind of hard to explain. The way it works is, so I don't know if anyone's seen it, but you basically, you have these different spots on the board and where you lay the card dictates like what beat it plays out of that song. So it could be like the Jackson 5, for example. It could be like the lyrics from the Jackson 5, but you can mix it with like the guitar and the bass and drums and everything from like Disturbed or from, um, you know, Poison or something like that. So you, you basically, you kind of have this, you can mix and match like different genres of music and sort of play it around. Right, yeah, it's kind of weird. We're gonna stream it again, uh, Wolf. We'll stream it again real soon, once I convince her. Yeah, right? A little weird. Not bad, though. It's a little different on the style tape, but I'm just kinda, I think what I'm gonna do is make a couple, so the idea that I have for a webcomic, it has like robots in it. Has like it's very heavily based on like robots and sci-fi and stuff. So I just want to sit here and play around and like make some different robots and kind of see. Hope y'all don't mind. We'll just do something a little different tonight. So we'll go here. Yeah, it's pretty cool though, Wolf. Like it's pretty cool. Like me and her have a really good time with it. We just make just random beats and and she had blast with it. Like we mix. Some really weird stuff, but pretty fun. There's a VOD. Uh, there's a VOD on uh, DLive and Mixer where we did it. Pretty cool. All right, I don't want to do another flat robot. Let's try to do like a turn robot. So if we were going to do, let's do something like this and we'll give him a turn sort of like this. We'll do, we'll actually turn it this way. We're gonna go with the same style, but then what we're gonna do, because I don't want everything I do to be sort of this flat perspective, 
you know, I want to get in some turn stuff as well. So we'll kind of go like this, give it that same color, but then we'll just take it darker on the inside, cut it and paste it. Okay. That's how you can start to sort of create that depth right there like that. Pretty good stuff. Yeah, but um, I'll announce it the next time we do it, Wolf. That way, if you want to check it out, it's pretty fun. If you if you Google Drop Mix, you'll see it. It's a pretty neat little thing. I mean, apparently the game didn't sell well. And a lot of people think it had a lot to do with, like, crappy advertising. Um, I don't know, personally. But um, I, I had fun with it. But I also only paid $30 for it. I didn't pay uh, $50 like some people, or $100 like some people did. So I can't really speak to that, you know. But, like, for what I paid for it, I'm totally satisfied with it. Absolutely. Okay, let's go here. Let's make like a little weird looking sort of shaped robot. I think we'll do something. I don't even know. This is how I sketch. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Well, let's kind of go. Let's come out of the center of this. We'll make it look like some sort of like a something. We'll go to the back with it. All right, cool. And then what we'll do is we'll get the shading and everything in here. So we'll do like a little, what would be like maybe a bump or something up here on the head or like maybe an access panel or something like here. Did you just sneeze, baby? You okay? Hmm? Yeah? about the comic are you going to make it like a short sunday morning cartoon or more of a linear story i think i'm going to do more of like a linear story wolf i think we'll do like a i think my plan is if i get it up off the ground and i like the style and everything i think what i'll do is like a linear story i'll come up with like a story and then i think what we'll do is it'll be sort of just episodes like episode one two three so forth and so on and we'll just kind of let it build and then I'm going to look for some different places to post, like, webcomics. Like, I know there's tapas and webtoons and stuff like that. I just, you know, I want to I wanna start experimenting and exploring with creating finished products. Like, I, I don't want to just make emotes and characters all the time, right? Like, I want to, I really want to figure out how to take what I do and turn it into something. Like... And not that it's ever going to be, you know, some huge thing, but, like, I really want to focus on turning it into something that could potentially become something. You know, who knows? I mean, even if it's something that I just enjoy making and sharing with other people, you know, that, that's really, that's really the goal with it. I mean, because it's like anything in life, right? You don't want to stop, you don't ever really want to stop growing and learning. I mean, that's a really important thing to do, you know? And so I'm, I'm trying to force myself out of that comfort zone instead of just making characters or emotes and things like that and like really get into how to make something bigger like a book or a story because i'm actually working on like th two or three little kids books i'm working on like an abc book for little kids like really little kids um and i'm gonna try to see if we can publish that on like maybe amazon and some stuff like that and then i want to work on like maybe more of like a junior book for like maybe kids in the age range of six to seven ish and just make some little different ideas and products and just kind of mix things up and, and see what see what's possible, you know? I mean, because why not? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's like I said, I, 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 I really been thinking heavy on it. And it's like, you know, I want to I want to try to really do something with it because I feel like I have the talent to focus into something. It's just when you when you sit down and you start thinking of the bigger picture, like when you start thinking about like, okay, I want to make a comic, right? There's all these little steps that you don't think about or you don't rationalize until you really start to look at the how to do it. And then you start going, holy crap, you know, I've got to come up with this. I got to come up with that. I've got to worry about story and pacing. And there's just so many little nuances that you have to sort of pay attention to, right? And those are the learning factors that you just sort of learn over time. And then it sort of develops into a skill. And that's where I'm at right now. It's like, how do I, how do I turn that into something? How do you spell what, baby? Rain? How would you spell rain? R-A-I-N. Rain. Good try, though. Yeah, I mean, we're working on it. You know, it's... I don't know. 
go, let's go like this. Because I think what I want to do is, I want to experiment with making in this style. So we'll kind of do the same thing here. We'll go here, we'll go back to this color, and all we're doing is stepping that color right now. So, we're working on more of like a, instead of that flat character, we're working on more of like a forced perspective here. And I think we'll kind of, I like the idea of app like books or that's in that smartphone. Yeah, and that's sort of the thing. So I've been looking into it, and what's really cool about that wolf is um, Amazon actually has a really cool tool that lets you create on, not only kid books, but like uh, illustrated books, but comics as well. They actually give you the tools where they give you the guidelines. They say like, okay, make your art in this size, right? And then you can actually compile it into their formatted book that sells on the Amazon bookstore. And they're not the only ones. There's other companies that do that. So, I mean, it's one of those, like, you know, you'd be reselling through, like, a, that sort of market. But if I can come up with some ideas and different ways to do it, I mean, why not, you know? Yeah, it's, it's sort of a learning process. It's one of those you got to sort of play with it. Hey, Fire Girl, how you doing? I notice I'm getting some artifacts over on DLive. I'm not sure what that's about, guys. I apologize for that. Um, I didn't, guess I need to check my um, my frame rates or, or my... What do they call that? I forget what they call it. I'll have to check that on uh, OBS and see what that's all about. Because I switched to OBS. Hey, thank you for the follow, Fire Girl. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you for the support. Thank you for the ice cream. Oh, thank you for the ice cream. Thank you. Thank you for the ice cream. <laughs> Thank you for those ice creams. For anyone who's new here, my name's Jeremiah. Thank you for the ice cream. I do uh, vector art, pixel art. We do animation. Do all kinds of fun Thank stuff here. Thank you for the ice cream. Thank you for the ice cream. I appreciate that. We got a new follower. Just board them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank for you for the, the follow. Thank you for the ice creams and the lemons. I appreciate that. Thank you. Wow, guys. Thank you for the support. Thank you for the lemons. All right. Huh? You playing the dragon game? That's a pretty dragon. It's like a rainbow dragon. My daughter's over here behind me playing Roblox. Thank you for the ice cream. Thank you for the ice creams. I appreciate that, guys. So for anyone Thank who's new here, ice cream. my name's Jeremiah. Um, I make art, as you can see, sort of a creative dream. If you Thank guys you have any questions, uh, the softwares I'm using, the techniques I'm doing, feel free to ask. Um, we have sort of an open teaching stream here. I'm, I don't mind helping answer questions if I can. So if I can help you in any way, let me know. Other than that, sit back, relax. Thank you for, the ice thank you for cream. being here. Thank you for the ice cream. I appreciate that. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for the ice cream. All right, let's put an eye on this thing. What kind of what kind of legs would this little robot thank have? Thank you for the ice cream. And for those just checking in, we're kind of making some random robots here. So yeah, it's a little different, but we're getting there. Let's do some little like. Let's try, let's try to draw these and see what we come up with. Let's go like this. We'll point this off. I want to see if we can make like a little, sort of a pointed looking edgy toe. What we'll do is we'll force it into some different perspectives. So this toe would be forward facing in this perspective. This toe would be sort of rounded here, but then more forced into this perspective. Yep, good, more like this. And then we're going to sort of do a back toe more in this perspective. And then we'll connect them into the, the chassis there. We'll play around with that. Let's go here. Hey, Bo, how you doing? All right, we're going to kind of force it into this perspective. We're going to go ahead and drop a color on it. And we'll just kind of pivot this here and send it to the back. Cool. Then what we'll do is we're going to, and you can see we're just sort of hand drawing each one of these, which is relatively easy to do if you use the uh, if you use the pen tool, right? Not too hard to do. We'll just kind of come in here. All right. We'll, we'll try you. We're gonna go with this color. And again, it's all about sort of that placement. So we'll go there and you can see where it starts to sort of fill in, right? And we haven't done any shading or anything yet. Right now we're just working on sort of the shapes of what the character could look like. Because again, I'm 
sort of trying to get away from just flat, 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 flat vector stuff. Not that I dislike it, but I'm trying to sort of, you know, grow and branch out just a bit. So we're starting to play around with, like, what certain things would look like. Very cool. <clears throat> Decided to want to win. Look, I'm mixing that I'm using go to first thing to watch while it's work. Well, well, very nice. Good to have you. Thank you. Uh, thanks for stopping in. If you have any questions, let me know. So for these, I think what we'll do is we'll go a little bit lighter. Now we'll work on some shading and stuff, and we'll see if we can't really bring this out. So we'll turn this into a cool robot. What kind of eyes should we have here? Should we have like a, a like a glowing looking lighted eye? Should we do like something with like liquid or something in it? And you know something cool. First time I found someone doing the same thing I'm doing during a stream. Vector art of robots for animation. Oh, right on, Bo. You make uh, you make vectors. What uh, do you use? Um, what tool do you use? What software? I use Affinity. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Affinity. So the whole reason I'm doing this, Bo, is um, I'm, I'm sort of playing around with this style a little bit because I'm really considering working on like a webcomic or some sort of something in this style. I'm not 100% sure yet, but I want to sort of start focusing on something with this. And I think I'm going to use this style to do it. Um, and webcomic is really the only thing that's sort of coming to mind at this point, but I've got a couple ideas. A couple, a couple of small ideas. Let's do a start an eye. What we'll do is we'll do the same sort of perspective we've been doing. We'll kind of come, I'd say, here. Yeah, I think it's cool when you see vector streams because you don't see a whole lot of vector art streams. I mean, you do occasionally. Um, most of the streams are going to be, most of the streams are going to be like, you know, digital painting and stuff, which is great, but I'm really into vector stuff. Hey, Tech. Yeah, that code, that was an old one I did. Um, really old one, but it, 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 Ko is one of my absolute favorite streamers, period. He was actually the very first streamer I ever watched, um, on Twitch. And has, I've been a big fan of Ko since early, early, early on. Early on. Trying to break out my style comfort zone. I tend to do digital painting illustration. Well, see, there you go. Yep. So, and that's what I was saying is most of the, the art streams you see are going to be like raster and, and digital painting and stuff, which is, which is fantastic. It's just not my vibe. Like... I'm more into vector and things like that. Um, so, because I think it's neat when people come in here because some people are sort of like, what is this? You know, because they've never like really seen vector art or the, the cleansliness of it, you know? And so they're, they're kind of like, what are you, what are you making? <laughs> Which is really cool because I like to sort of help people learn and, and show people what this is. Because I think vector art is absolutely fantastic. Um, you know? Obviously. I mean, I do it a lot, but I love it. <clears throat> how did you learn perspective? It's something I find extremely fascinating, but I'm not sure how to learn more about it. So honestly, Wolf, um, the best advice I can give you for that is just, just keep working at it. And, and I'm not, I'm not just trying to sound cliche. Like for me, it's been all about just constantly doing it. Um, and the way that I that I can explain that is like I I will constantly make myself angry <laughs> because I'll try to draw something above my skill level and I know it's purposely above my skill level, but I'll do it with the intention of knowing that I'm going to learn, right? And so I'll try to draw like a hand, which can be really complicated and like a fourth perspective, or I will draw like a um, you know, or I'll draw like because you'll notice like a lot of my artwork is going to be sort of that flat vector style which again is what i'm sort of trying to transcend beyond i'm trying to go beyond that a little bit um so it's one of those things where learning that perspective i'm still doing myself like it it's not an easy thing to do i mean it is pretty it's pretty tough perspective is tough so but all i can say on that is just keep practicing keep practicing just keep making stuff there really is, I found, and I think most artists would agree with this, the number one tool for getting better at art is just making art. Um, and, and I firmly believe that because it's one of those things where you can, you can take all the advice in the world, right? But it's really about just making art. You just have to keep 
doing it. The more you do it, the better you get, and the more the more experience you get. Because what you're seeing me make is just a culmination of all of my abilities. Like lately, we've been getting into stuff like this. Um, hang on. We've been doing scenes, which are very, very foreign to me, but I'm trying to figure them out. So I've been doing things like this, which is creating whole scenery, but I'm doing it completely in vector, you know? I've had so far trying to make two things with an outline look like it's the same object while it's allowing me to move it. Big Good. Right. And kind of like what Wolf was saying, Bo, like you just gotta, you just gotta keep playing with it. Um... Wow. You really, really do. Huh? Well, hit is B O W, not B E A U. <laughs> My daughter's back there. But yeah, I, um, yeah. If I can ever help in any way, though, uh, be sure to let me know. Oh, well, like, I, I have people on my Discord that ask questions all the time. We have a very open Discord. I, I drop videos in there for people. So if somebody says like, hey, how the heck do I do this? I'll make a quick video real quick, kind of show them how to do it. Or if somebody has a question like, how do I do this? I'll, you know, try my best to help people understand because I'm a big believer in, you know, helping other people because that's sort of been my goal when I started streaming was what, what do I want to do as a streamer? And it's always sort of been, let's help people. Let's, let's inspire people. Let's motivate people because I feel like why not you know what i mean and and if i can help somebody else learn they may in turn teach me something or they may in turn you know help me understand something better so i'm all about like teaching educating experimenting with other people you know and trying to trying to just get better at it as a whole so yeah it's fun helping yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And we're going to try something really crazy, guys. You want to talk about comfort zones? Check this out. I'm going to try to recreate a Bob Ross painting in Vector, um, which I say that, but I have no idea how I'm going to do it. I've got no clue, but we're going to try and we're going to do it live on stream. So it's going to be a fascinating day. <laughs> I'll let people know when we're going to try it because I honestly have no idea how it's going to turn out. It could be a complete bust, or it could be something that turns out really, really cool, you know? Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna apply my style to it, and we'll just learn together. But the cool part is, is that, you know, I find that when I try something really difficult like that, it really helps sort of teach you new ways to do things. <clears throat> I've tried to do like you've said, in one of the first streams I've watched of yours to make small project. You know, that's big right there, Wolf. And that is the absolute truth. And I can't iterate that enough. I find that a lot of people, somebody acts on YouTube the other day, because I do YouTube as well, in case anyone's wondering. Um, but I do like tutorials and stuff up there. And so the other day, somebody on YouTube, they were like, hey, I'm having a hard time learning the skill. And I was like, okay, let me help you out here. Break it down into smaller projects. Don't try to shade a whole picture, for example. If you want to learn how to do vector shading, make a circle. Just make a circle, right? And practice and experiment with just shading this one shape. Like, don't don't draw an entire scene, right? And try to to do shading on the whole thing. Like, get comfortable with get comfortable with the skill set on a smaller, more well, you know, just a smaller project, right? And then just build and build and build and. I found that to be so helpful for me. I, I, I start a project, I finish a project. Once I'm finished with it, I move on. You know, and what I constantly try to do is just keep learning from those projects and getting better. And over time, you're just going to get really good at it. And then you'll do like I'm doing now. Like when I first started streaming this, it was sort of difficult to talk like this and draw. But it just sort of has become this, this thing that I've just gotten really comfortable with. And it, it works out really well. Works out really, really well. Okay, cool. We got this little guy here. And I'm sort of experimenting with the shading and stuff here. We'll kind of go here. And you'll see how I shade. I'm really sloppy when I shade. I like way overemphasize it, but the reason I do that is like, 
So let's say I want to shade this eyeball. Let's say we were making this an eyeball with a stroke on the outside, right? Let's just say it was an eyeball right here. And we'll say it's white fill, okay? Let's say I wanted like a gray stroke on the inside, right? I'll way overemphasize the shape on the outside because I don't really care how sloppy it is because all I'm going to do is mask it inside the eye. So I could literally make a shape, you know, like this. Does not matter how big it is. But because of the way that I do my mask, like this right here, right? You're only going to see the part that shows through on the mask. You see that? So even though the shape is as big, I'm sloppy as, as, as crap when I draw because I can be. And I don't really worry about you know those sort of things in with vector and then of course because it's masked i can move it around like this inside of the shape so you can see how big that shape is though and if we cut it out of there and paste it back again and, and i wouldn't normally go this big with it but it just kind of shows you how sloppy you can be and again you can see it overemphasized here you see with the shape how big it is but it's masked inside of that shape all right let's do let's do a little circle here Problem is I'm too ambitious for non-existent skill. Hey, but well, you know Wolf, that it's good to be ambitious though, because that's how you're gonna get better at this. <clears throat> Speaking of breaking things into different parts, I'm wondering if it's possible for me to somehow combine vector and raptor art. There is, there is, and in fact, Bo, we'll show you real quick. So with Affinity, uh, because again, I don't use Adobe anymore. Uh, I will show you exactly how I do that. So Affinity has the power to do vector and raster in the same program, and I'll show you why that's very cool for anyone's curious. So let's say we make this a vector shape, which right now it's a vector shape. You can see that it has points, but we can treat it like a vector object. We can add these points like this, right? Let's say we spin it. Let's say we add another point. So you guys see it's a vector shape. Well, what's cool is with Affinity, you can actually come in here. You can actually grab a brush. Like, let's go in here and grab a texture brush. Like, uh, maybe this. Look at this. So we're doing raster shading on a vector shape right in Affinity. So now I don't normally combine vector and raster, but you can do it simply in Affinity. You don't have to bridge. Like if you use Adobe, you have to bridge from Photoshop to Illustrator and Illustrator back to Adobe and, and or Photoshop and so forth and so on. You don't have to do that here. And so let's say I, let's just say, I'll actually try to shade this a little bit. Uh, let's say we, we do a little bit of like raster shading here, right? And we're like, oh, you know, this is looking kind of cool. And, we like the direction this is going and everything, but we want to change the vector shape up. Okay, you go back to the vector persona and you're still a vector shape. You've not given up the vector shape, so you can still modify the vector components of it, but you've got the raster shading still inside of it. And then of course you can go back to the raster persona and you can continue to do, you know, and well, the other cool part with this too is you can actually do a whole digital painting in this software. Like you don't even, you don't even have to combine the two. Like if you just want to straight up digitally paint here, you can go for it. I mean, it's, it. you can digital paint here. You can, you know, combine vector raster. You can do a whole bunch of stuff. I have to look into Affinity. Oh, Affinity is getting really powerful. It, it's one of those, like, I think a lot of people at first, you know, they, they've really been stuck on Adobe, but, and I get it. I mean, Adobe's been around forever. It's what people know, but Affinity is becoming a very, very powerful program with a very rich skill set um i'll show you guys something really cool for anyone that's interested in this they just released publisher so if you're into adobe products publisher is adobe's answer to indesign and i'm going to show you one thing to me that is just mind numbing um I, adobe doesn't do this that i know of let's say we made a new publisher page and we're like okay we're going to make a book. So actually, let's close this and I'll show you how you can make a book. So we go to file new. Let's say we wanted it to be, I don't know, 10 pages. You can see the layout. Okay, so this would allow you to compile a book, like start to finish, front to back, front to back, so forth and so on. But what's cool about this, where this is really fascinating, is if you own Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer, you don't even have to open them or or do anything to to create the art and publish it. I'm going to show you what I mean. If we go to the vector persona, this is Affinity Designer in Publisher, which means I don't have to go into Affinity, create each page, export each page out to a JPEG or a PNG, go to Publisher and import them, move them around. No, I literally can create vector art right here. Like that robot I'm making right now, we could make it right here because we are, we are using what is essentially 
entirely um, Affinity Designer. And if you own Affinity Photo and you go to the Photo Persona, you're you're using Affinity Photo. So it's like using Illustrator and Photoshop right in your book design program without ever having to leave. Affinity Designer is 50 bucks. You don't pay another dime for it. I've owned it for three years, two years, free updates. They're constantly releasing new new features. Yeah, it is. It's an amazingly powerful software. Um, I I recommend it to everyone that comes in the stream, especially if you're using like Adobe and you want to just see if there's a different alternative. Um, Affinity offers a 10-day trial on all their software, so you can download it, try it, see what you think. I mean, it's fantastic software. Now I paid 30 a piece because I was in the beta for each one. But uh, at the $50 price tag, absolutely worth it. Absolutely worth it. There are some features in, in um, Affinity that just don't exist in Adobe. And there's features in Adobe that don't exist in Affinity. Or in, uh, you know, Affinity software. But, I mean, really good software. Oh, it's amazing. <clears throat> and see, I like to showcase it because, you know, as a freelancer, there's plenty of reason to want to save some money. And, you know, we all know, we all know how easy it is. I think almost everybody knows how easy it is to go out and find illegal copies of Adobe. I mean, everybody's done it from big people to small people, right? But I'm a person, like, I like to support the companies that I use and the softwares that I use. So that's the reason I own all their products. Um, because I think Affinity is a fantastic company and I think they're doing some really cool stuff. And what's really interesting is most people don't realize that Affinity as a company has been around for 30 years. Well, the company isn't called Affinity. They're called Serif, S-E-R-I-F, and they've been around for a very long time. They just recently, within the last four to five years, decided to start building what has become the Affinity line of products, which is photo, designer, and um, publisher, right? But the company itself has been around for like 30 plus years, and they have some very, very award-winning software. So it's not like they're just some new company that's like, hey, we want to do this. I mean, they've, they've got experience. It's just that their, their Affinity products are new to the market. Oh, one more cool thing, Bo, and anyone else that's watching, check this out. The Affinity softwares, I want to think of the best way to say this. The files are, the files are crap cross software. Meaning, if I make a file in Affinity Designer, I can go and open that file directly up in Photo. I can go and open that file up directly in Publisher, and I can keep doing that. They're not independent to each software, meaning I don't have to export a, a, a Photoshop file to an Illustrator file. And from an Illustrator, they'll open in any of the Affinity software because that's the way that it was built. It was built from the ground up that the, the file type is native to all their softwares. Easy to find in legal versions of things. Way more hassle to get a loop. Right. Yeah. And we also keep a list of like free softwares for people that want to sort of you know, that want to get into this and not really spend any money. And I understand how that goes, you know? Yeah. Daddy, what do you got, baby? Oh, a rainbow dragon. Wow. Cool, baby. Yeah. And as you can tell, I'm passionate about it. I like talking about it. I like helping people learn about different things and stuff like that. So, again, if anyone has questions, let me know. And thanks for being here. I appreciate that support. Here. I think we're going to... I don't know how I want to do this. I don't know if I want to do it like this, or... Yeah, but I'd suggest trying it, uh, Bo. Just try the trial. It, it, 10 days. You can learn a lot about a software in 10 days. And and really, the fact of the matter is, it, it's 50 bucks, right? I mean, that's 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 extremely affordable, considering you'll own it, you'll own it permanently. You'll never pay another dime. I mean, it's extremely affordable. I think anybody who's into design could agree with that. I would hope. And what's really funny is like if you follow Affinity on like social media and stuff, every day you see people learning about it and they're like, why have, Why did I not know about this sooner? You know, <laughs> it's one of those funny things where it's like, 
I don't think a lot of people realize that there are alternatives out there. I think a lot of people are still, you know, they're still sort of, um, a lot of people still think of, you know, Adobe is, is like the only horse in the race, which is not the case. I think we'll go here, and I want to take this down a bit. Yeah, we're just kind of sketching tonight, folks, so... If you guys have a question, let me know. I think what we'll do... We're going to come across this with one shape, and we'll use this one shape to sort of shape both of these in. It's been weirder in the internet since it's easier to share stuff than in real life. Yeah. I mean... What have you been using, Wolf? What have you been using to make your art? Anything in particular? Or what have you been experimenting with, I should ask? Here. Okay, cool. Oh, definitely. Yeah, that's a good idea. Just wondering why you're not trying it in your main. So... I've, I've tried Krita, Krita, however, I know everybody says it a little differently. I have no qualms with Krita, and I and I always keep that in my list of free softwares for people that are looking to, you know, because I understand, like, one big thing, I'm one big takeaway for me is I understand not everybody has the money to go out and spend even $50 on a piece of software. I get it. Not everybody's in that position. So I like to have, like, a, a list of softwares for people. So if we go, like, here... You'll see, like, I have, I want to say the command is right here. Yeah, like there. Graphic Designer, Inkscape, Pencil 2D, 2P2, things like that, right? I like to keep a list of things because I like to give people alternatives if they don't necessarily have 50, 100, however much it is to go out and just buy stuff. You know, because I get it. I mean, you know, to some people, $50 is a lot of money and they may just not have it to spend, which is totally understandable. I've actually had Ace Bright for a few months before even watching you as a gift from a friend. Oh, Ace Bright is perfect. Well, uh, I have Ace Bright right here. I do I do pixel art in Ace Bright. So, yeah, I've made little animations like this. You know, like little animations for the stream and stuff, like the birthday cake exploding and stuff. Ace Bright is a fantastic piece of software. If you're into animation and you're into pixel art, we do pixel art on here sometimes as well. But, um, yeah, like that that's, that's a fantastic software. Um, I would definitely recommend if you own it, learn it. You can do some really cool stuff with Ace Bright. That is a very, very full featured program. Yeah. Well, here's a cool thing too, Wolf. Is like art is very <clears throat> art is very easy to sort of like the same concepts you're going to use for digital painting or vector art when it comes to like colors and shading and stuff like that is pretty much synonymous across the art world, right? So any medium you start with, you're gonna learn things that you can sort of take another art form if you want, even into traditional art. So like, just learning how to create a circle and shade it and understand how color theory works and things like that, you're gonna be learning so much that you can use elsewhere. So just start small and just, you know, like I say, start small and just build your way up and you'll be surprised how much you learn and how much is actually transferable. <clears throat> and we do animations here as well guys um we don't animate as often as we do some other stuff but we do animate here once in a while live on stream so you guys sometimes will come in and, and catch that <clears throat> absolutely and that's the thing is like you know art is one of those things you can do it for cheap and it can cost you a fortune. You know, it all depends on where you're really, where you're looking to go. I mean, you know, or you take a software like Krita. Krita, that does animations, you know, that does vectors. So, I mean, there's, there's, um, there's always options, you know. Again, I think a lot of people, they just assume, and, it, and it's a safe assumption. They assume that people that make art, you know, they have these big fancy computers and it's really expensive software. And that's not always the case. I mean, I've seen people with make absolutely stunning things with completely free software you know so it's not always about like the tools it's about learning and, and, and growing you know i'm gonna try 
try something. Hey, Dark. Turn that music down some place. If I can hear your, your dragon music through my, my earphones, it's a little, a little too loud. Thank you, baby. Animation very limited in Krita. I'll show you something cool. I use a software called Moho. I don't know if you've seen this. Mo, but I use it. Oh, I've already got it open over here. I use a software called Moho and I do animations. I'm learning animations. Let's put it that way. So this right here that you see is actually vector art. But what's cool about this is even though that is a 2D face with the way that you can rig and create bone structure it allows you to almost make it look like it's three-dimensional or like it has three dimensions, right? But it's not. That's actually just a 2D flat vector fade that I've warped into that, that sort of mold there. The other cool thing is if we look at stuff like this, this was another fun project. And on this one, you're going to see the bones and the controllers move, right? Again, that is a flat vector character, but it's rigged in a way so that it squatches, stretches, it has eye movement and everything to almost make it look realistic. And again, I'm still a novice with this, but like it allows you to do some really, really cool things. Um, and what I like is you can draw vector art right in this software. So you can actually, if you wanted to, you could draw the vector art right in Moho. You know, I've heard of Dragon Bones. I've never truly tried to learn it though um I, it's just one of those i haven't sat down and said like i'm gonna learn this you know what i mean the thing that i like about moho the software i just had up there is you can actually um it you can actually uh make vector art right in that software like you're not you don't just have to do like art that you've imported that you can actually create vector art in the software, which is really cool. So you can do like supplemental art. So like, let's say you carry in a character and you want to add like some stars or you want to add like a little explosion. You can draw that art right in there. So instead of having to constantly import and move around, you can, so what I do is when I animate that software. So like, for example, this one here, my mod water bottle. Hi, water bottle. I made that animation of her, right? All those assets were made in Affinity. They were imported into Moho and then they were animated, right? Um, and it allows you to create really fluid animations that are um, really clean, like super clean. And then like we did one for my buddy 7 of 7, who's an artist here on Mixer as well. And um, you know, little things like that. You can, you can do some cool stuff. But you know, animation is one of those things. It's like a whole different mindset when you animate. Like some people, you know, drawing and animating are two different worlds, like literally. Yeah, and that's the thing, like, so if you if you look at Moho, you can legit draw the vector art right in it. Now I will say, to be fair, I prefer the vector tools and affinity over Moho. But I'm still learning Moho. But like if you look at this, like we just made a vector shape. There it is. And of course we can you know, we can change the colors and we can change the outline and stuff like that, you know. But I mean, it, you can create the vector art right here. Being able to fix change the model. Yeah, I I want to learn Blender. Blender's something that I want to sink my teeth into, especially now that 2.8 is out. Um, I want to learn more about the 2D animations in Blender, but I don't even know where to begin with Blender. Um, Blender is something that I have... I've literally opened it like twice in my life, so I don't really know much about Blender, but it's something that I think I did install it. Yeah, I did. It's something that I really want to sort of string, uh, sink my teeth into. Yeah, that's what I've heard. I'm gonna learn it. I'm gonna learn it. Okay. And see, I'm one of those, I'm stubborn, right? Like, <laughs> I'll just keep my throwing myself at it until I learn it. That's just the way I am. So I'll, you know, really, I need to find some decent, like, just primers, like blender primers, like, uh, just, this is prime, this is blender, 
you know, like introductory to this is Blenders. I should probably search YouTube and see if anybody's done like a welcome to 2.8. You know what I mean? There's a ton. Do you use Blender Dragon? Ton on YouTube. Are there any for uh, now? Are the should I be specifically looking for 2.8 over 2.7? Bizzo is a better resource. Specifically 2.8. Okay. I'm going to learn it. I'm dedicated. I'm going to learn it. I love learning. I'm a very, uh, very learning type person. Like, I really enjoy learning things. Get rid of this guy. But the UI is completely different. Okay. Now, here's the thing. This is what I'm looking for. So if anyone has a, a good suggestion, hit me. Um, I want to find a good After Effects replacement. Something that can really do or get into like motion graphics and things like that. That's kind of what I'm looking for. Um, and I found a couple that were kind of close, but not quite there. You know, tab for things like animating, modeling, painting, act, okay, okay. Did I try a couple that said they were After Effects replacement? No. No, they weren't. <laughs> nope. So that's something I'm still sort of like trying to figure out. Hit Film Express. Now, can they do motion graphics though, Bo? Or are they... Or are they? I thought I thought that uh, I thought that DaVinci Resolve was more for like like actual like uh, video production, video editing. Unless I'm completely wrong. Because I want I want something that'll do some of the motion graphics and animating side of what After Effects does. It's kind of what I want to see, or would like to see. I should guess would probably be. Really? Huh. Yeah, I heard Blender now has a video editing suite. Blender is fantastic. I it amazes me they're able to do what they do with Blender. Okay, we got this little robot dude. We'll kinda put him here. Should we give this little guy arms? You guys wanna see arms on this thing? What should we do with this little fella? Should we give him some like little menacing looking arm? Or should we give him like a little like a little laser cannon? What, what do you what, what do you guys want to see? I'm open to suggestions here. Yeah, blender is amazing. It's also really pretty cool. Fully rendered. Really? You see, I know nothing about 3D rendering. Nothing. Like, I am not a 3D modeling. I've never done it. I don't know where to begin. I don't even know what goes into it. Like, I've never even looked into it. Because it's one of those things where, like, I decided when I started doing 2D art, I didn't want to get into 3D, right? Because I was like, I want to get really good at this and animating this style. I don't feel like I have enough time and resources to get good at all of it. You know what I mean? Like, I just don't. So I'm committed to this side of it, <laughs> and I'm going to let other people do the 3D side. That's just sort of the way I feel, you know. Now, that's not to say I don't want to learn Blender, but I want to learn Blender more for the 2D aspect of it. Like, the, the drawing side of it and the animating side of it, you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely I'll dabble with it, but, like, I my, my brain shuts down when I start even th looking at 3D because I'm like... I, I, I know I could learn it, but it's like, I only have, I, I realize I only have so much time to be able to do what I want to do, and I want to get really good at this, you know? But yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to dabble with it some, for sure. Let's put some little arms on the dude. Two things, sculpting and getting into paper craft. I don't know what paper, what is paper craft? I'm not familiar.
Is anyone here use Linux as like a daily driver or use it on a regular? Papercraft is making models IRL with paper, making a paper house, car ads. Oh, okay, okay. All right, I've never looked into it. I've seen people sort of mess around with it, I think. Oh, but I don't think I've ever actually like looked into it like hardcore. The reason I ask is, I think I'm going to try to do some streams from Linux here and there. Because I, I loaded up a Linux box the other day, and I got OBS installed on it and everything, and everything's working really good. So I might actually try to do some streams from Linux once in a while, kind of see how it goes. It would be different, but I think it'd be kind of fun just to see what's up. Because I have some friends at work that are like hardcore Linux users, so... It's a piece of paper. Now, I know, like, a, I've watched people 3D model, right? And it's almost like you take, like, a piece of, like, a like a round sphere, if you will. And they just sort of mold it, right? Just sort of push it around and shape it into a shape, right? And I know that you can, you can do, you oh, that's sculpting. Oh, okay. And I know I've seen people take, like, cylinders and stuff and make chairs and couches and things like that. So I know it's possible to do some, like, really weird stuff with it. I have men on a dual boot. Yeah, I'm, I'm messing around with it, Wolf. Like, I don't use Linux as much as I used to. Once in a while, I'll get into it. Um, but I've got some friends at work. Like, they are really hardcore into Linux. And um, they asked me if I ever tried to stream with it. And I was like, mm, no. Never even, I never crossed my mind, to be honest with you. But then I started looking into streaming from it. And I was like, oh, well, why not? It might be kind of fun. Sculpting is like sculpting. On, I gotcha. Starting to see an interesting pattern. What are you saying? Yeah, I might, I might try some Linux. All right, we'll see. Maybe one day we'll we'll boot it up and 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 see if anybody even notices anything different. I'll be like, yeah, hey, we're streaming from Linux. Sculpting versus modeling, like painting versus, I gotcha, okay. Yes, that's the huge issue. Um, that is, that's that been the only thing that's ever kept me from seriously using it, Bo, is uh, compatibility. You know, like, like Affinity doesn't support it. You know, a lot of the softwares I use on a daily basis don't support it. So, the softwares that I would have to... The softwares that I would have to utilize are going to be softwares that I've used, but they may not necessarily be things that I use as a daily driver, but I still think it would be fun. <clears throat> I absolutely love learning things, but I'm not passionate to follow through with it. You know, that's the hardest part of anything, Wolf. It's like, it, it's so much fun to begin learning something new, right? Like, oh, this is, this, you're, you get excited, you get hyped up and everything, right? But then really finding that deep drive to just keep pushing it forward, it can be a, it can be a real challenge sometimes, man. It really can. Oh, okay. Speaking of YouTube, I did a thing on YouTube. I passed 400 subscribers, which to me is uh, phenomenal. I'm really excited about that. And I've passed, I've almost broken 20,000 views, which is fantastic. I'm hyped. <clears throat> I used to be an IT professional while well, doing that. I use it every day. Right. There you go, Bo. Yeah, it's... It, so you know what I do when I hit that wall dragon is like, I hit that all the time. So like here, I was working on this earlier today, dragon, and I'll show you real quick. Because I, I know you were here. Um, I was talking about this earlier. Like I'm sort of playing around with like building or trying to figure out how I would build a comic. And you know what's crazy about this is like, I've never even tried to do it. I've never, ever tried to do it. So I don't even know where to begin. But I'm trying not to let myself get overwhelmed, even though I know nothing about it. I'm trying to take it in small steps and just sort of slowly work my way up. You know what I mean? And then maybe I get to the point that I've actually created something, you know? Um, 
trying, you know, but I, I, I try to, I try to stay motivated. I try to stay focused and not let that, oh God, I have no idea because I know it can be very, it can be a very derailing process where it can really sink you. But that's, yeah, Bo, that's what I said. Like, it's really cool. I appreciate it. Yeah, I was hyped. Like, I know that's small potatoes to some YouTubers and things like that. But to me, that's that's a huge accomplishment. I mean, to consider that I've um, amassed that many followers and that I have that many views. You know, it's like, wow, okay. People like what I'm doing. So I've been trying to commit some more time to YouTube, making more videos, um, you know, really trying to get content out there. Because, I mean, I, I enjoy YouTube. You know? It's a different spin, but I enjoy it. You know, it's funny, when I started streaming, I thought that I would actually play some games here and there on stream. But I've gotten to the point that every time I stream a game, I feel so weird because I'm so used to doing art. <laughs> I feel so funny when I try to stream a game. Like, I feel foreign. It's, it's, a, it's a weird, it's, and it's, a strange, it's a strange thing to try to explain, but it just doesn't feel right, you know? Yeah, yeah. I do intend to stream some more games eventually, but we'll see. I enjoy doing this. I'm just glad people enjoy watching it. And I think the the conversation is even better than the the stream, you know, to me, the conversation is really where it's at. Just being able to meet new people and talk about things like you know just different different components i think it's fascinating such a neat thing i'm gonna try to shave my hand so i am big into roguelike games um really big into roguelike games like i enjoy games that have a lot of replayability and have a good level of challenge to them um i also i used to be really big into mmos really big but I'm I'm uh, trying not to play them because they eat up way too much of my time and <laughs> the more time I spend playing those the less time I'm actually doing this which you know I've talked about before but it's really true like I spend so much time doing this off stream like I draw constantly constantly trying to get better and learn and doing commissions and things like that yes I'm US yeah, right? Isn't that crazy, Bo? I know, that always... It's its so weird, like... The internet... I was talking to my wife about that the other day. I said, you know... I'm, I'm, I'm 39, so I'm an older guy. But, like, when I was young... The internet was, was blossoming. It was, it was developing, right? And so, it was one of those things where it was like... We... We didn't really... I don't think people truly grasp where we would be now. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think we really understood it. Like, you know, I can sit here, you know dragon and bow and you know we can sit here and we can have these conversations we can talk about things we can become friends we can learn about each other and we can do these things you know and and it's it's such a weird concept but it's a great concept it really is i am an older guy 39 39 on the internet's old right dragon no yes come on dragon <laughs> All right, we won't use the term old, Dragon. We will use the term, well, well, what? What What term? You're 41. Oh, so we're about the same age then, man. Antiquated. <laughs> no, but I mean, you know, the thing is, I th yeah, absolutely. No, 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 no offense. Um, I think the thing is, what's cool about that, though, you know, is that um, I think it's cool because... You know, you guys can see like the style of stream that I have in, in the way that I do things. And, and that's sort of the way that I want to be a streamer. It's the way I want to be remembered. It's the way that I want to, I want to leave that impact, you know. And like, I think it's really cool as an older guy. We'll just use that there. It's like, I hope to be a positive role model and like influence on different people. Especially younger people coming in. And hopefully they can see that, you know, you can be this type of streamer, you know, without having to be something you're not. You know what I mean? Because, and there's nothing wrong with it. I know a lot of people have personas. I don't. This is who I am. And I always tell people that. When you come to my stream, you're going to get me. You know, and that's just the way it is. But, 
at my young age. I can't wait to get my tiny robot body and go conquer some planets. I'm right there with you, Wolf. Yeah, that's it, Dragon. You know, it's like, the thing is, is, is I realized that, that putting on a, a persona and acting a different way could definitely get you those. But, you know, that's not why I'm in this. You know, I'm in this because I, my goal is to meet new people and, like I've said, you know, just be a good influence, you know? Be a good influence. That's, why not? We need more people with a good influence. We really do. The world needs more of that. Let's get this dude little fingers. Alright. I'm just glad people like my streams. I'll be honest, like when I started streaming, you know, the whole reason I started streaming was I had a buddy of mine who st he still streams art on Twitch. He doesn't do it as much, but um, he actually started streaming before me. And I watched him stream a couple times and I was like, you know, that's really cool. I was like, I wonder, you know, I really had almost no aspirations when I started streaming because I just didn't know if what I did would honestly be, you know, well perceived or liked or whatever the word is you want to use. I just didn't know. And so it was one of those when I started doing it, I really didn't have a lot of like goals. I mean, of course, I wanted to, you know, get followers and stuff, but I just wasn't sure the overall picture of it. And then it's just slowly grown to where we're at now, and you know we passed 1,300 followers on Mixer, and you know we're we're really we're doing things, you know, and I'm almost to 400 on D Live, and it's it's really cool. It's it's humbling. It really is a humbling thing. Okay, let's try to. Draw. Try to draw this out and see how it goes. I don't think this is right. I'm trying to use this pencil tool to do something I don't think it wants to do. But that's cool. We'll move this into place. And then we'll sort of reshape these points. And then we can sort of shade it this way. Okay, yeah, that's that's actually really close to what I wanted to do. Surprisingly. And then we could sort of do it like this as well. Yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad. Yeah, but Wolf, honestly, I know you were asking earlier, like perspective and stuff man just keep drawing just keep drawing draw every day i'll show you something you guys ready to see something i don't know if y'all were here the other day for this i don't think y'all were so watch this i'm gonna show you something and we did this live on stream where is it okay here we go you ready here was like the second vector piece i ever made right here um Obviously, I wasn't taking it serious at the time. It was it was more just trying to understand how the shapes work. And so this is a really good example of what two years, I would say, two years of just doing this constantly can sort of get you, right? This is when I started learning vector art. And then you guys obviously see what I'm doing nowadays, right? So it's sort of, it's good sometimes to look back at where you were and where you know what i mean it's 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 good been streaming on youtube and twitch for a while but not only having one viewer perpetually pretty demoralizing what's that issue with youtube and twitch terms of service right oh okay cool i learned how to sculpt characters using life references stream because window is there yeah 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 so you got to be careful with that even like over here bo if you if you decide to stream on um mixer like a lot of platforms they're they're kind of picky with with how they handle nudity and stuff like that luckily for my content it's always very family friendly i don't really stream that kind of art but um i know you can do it i dragon if he's still listening he would know sometimes i think he knows more of the rules okay see right there a new dragon could probably chime in nudity art's okay um i don't i don't normally do that in my streams but i know that there are rule sets around it okay there you go as long as sexuality is not the focus. Okay, well, there you go, then. There you go. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, you know, it can't hurt to give Mixer a try. You know, here's the thing, Bo, is like, I, I am not the type, like, I'm not the type of person that's going to 
and I'm, I've always said this, like, I'm not the type of person that's gonna, like, bad talk one platform over another, you know what I mean? Like, I have friends that stream on Twitch, I have friends that stream on a lot of different platforms. I'm, you know, I'm all about, like, you stream where you want to stream, right? So, the way I would say it is, if, if you want to try a platform, try it, you know? If you're happy where you're at, be where you're at, you know? Don't, don't feel like you have to. Drawing woman presenting herself is not okay. Okay. Well, lucky for me, Dragon, I don't draw naked people, so <laughs> we're okay. But I can absolutely understand why people would. You know, I, I mean, and, and I'm totally in support of that style of art. Did you ever stream on Twitch Dragon? I don't think I've ever heard you talk about it. Did you ever stream there or did you start specifically on Mixer? If you don't mind me asking. I don't think I ever... You started there. Okay. Yep. You're past drawing yourself cross-eyed with a round belt. Yeah, well, you know, and, and I, you know, I wasn't really, I really wasn't taking it serious back then. You know, I didn't really know what to, and so it was one of those, like, I was trying to figure it out, but you could see how far you can come. Realistic painting, funnily enough, makes it harder to copy what you see. Well, yeah, I mean, I can understand that. So I used to do traditional art years and years ago. Like, the funny story for me was, I'll tell you my story real quick, because I don't know, some of y'all don't think you know this. So I was actually going to go to school to be an art major, and I was talked out of it, because I was basically told that, you know, at the ripe age of 19, that art doesn't make money, and there's no future in it. So I was talked out of going as an art major and I switched to IT. And so I've done IT my whole life. So I pretty much quit doing art for probably 20 years, probably a good 20 years. I didn't touch it at all. And then of course, with my daughter, we started doing art together, like drawing with crayons and things like that. And I hadn't done it in so long that um, I just really didn't care anymore. And then as my daughter started getting older, I started doing more of it. And then it was one of those, it was like, man, I really miss that. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm enjoying that. And so I just started looking into digital art, which is something I had never done until about two years ago. And then when I started looking at digital art, I found Vector and I loved the way it looked. And I just jumped in head first and just went from there. Oh, okay. Models and swimsuit. Really? Hmm. I don't know enough about Twitch Terms of Service to know, um, you know, what they do and don't allow. I don't, I don't really keep up with it. I'm an affiliate on Twitch, and I do stream there once in a blue moon, but, um, I have a lot of friends over there that stream there all the time. I just don't stream there that much. When I do stream there, though, I stream specifically to Twitch. Uh, because I'm an affiliate, I can't restream it. So, yeah. Which is part of the reason I stopped streaming over there so much. Was because I didn't like the way they handled that. Like, I don't want to be, you know, forced to, to stream in one location. Like, I I feel like my content's my content. I want to be able to stream, you know, where I want to stream kind of thing. So, yeah. Well, see, I didn't realize that, to be honest with you, Bo. When I when I took the affiliate status, like, I read it, but it didn't really click. And then when I actually started, I got affiliate, and, you know, things were growing. And then I actually started thinking about it, and I was like, man, that really stinks because I'm pretty much locked in. Like, I have to stream here and only here. And so I switched, you know. Yeah, there's no mixer affiliate, Bo. Um, so it's either, yeah, partner. So it's either you're a streamer like me or you're all the way up to partner. Like, you're dragging, dragging the partner. Um, so, like, it's one of those, 
yeah, the way it is. And it's, I'll tell you, um, I mean, it's a climb. It's a climb. The requirements for partner on here are lower than affiliate on Twitch. No, I think Twitch is easier. Twitch is a lot easier. Um, to get partner here, though, you got to have at least 2,000 followers, which is no small feat. 2,000 followers can be quite tricky. And then you've got to have, um, yeah, Twitch is 50 followers and three viewers for affiliate. And see, now, I I don't know what Twitch's partner program is. I don't know what their, what their numbers are for that. I have no idea. I've never looked at it. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Yeah, um, here you got to have all the way up to two thousand followers. So, I mean, it's a hike. Like, if you're starting out new, it's gonna be, you know, you've got to, you got to build that momentum. You got to build that community. You've really got to sort of focus that out. Oh, you're all right, Bo. You're okay. Yeah, I just don't want you to start streaming here and be like, oh, I'm ready for affiliate, and you're like, oh wait, two thousand followers. <laughs> two thousand followers is a, it's 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 a goal. I mean, you certainly have to shoot your sights at it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Don't feel bad. It's 11 o'clock at night for me, and I'm sitting here drinking black coffee. Yeah, I would, you know, and I'm curious about that dragon, and, and I know it's some of it's still NDA and all that, and I get it, but, like, I'm curious what that's going to mean for, like, different sizes and stuff like that. I'm really curious to see where that goes. I'm, I'm hoping they release some information soon so people can kind of get some, some info behind that. Professional angle disability. Oh, okay. Get yeah, mixer elixir. Yes. So I'm working on some mixer elixir emote dragon. I've had one heck of a week though, man. Been a heck of a week. Yeah, it's one of those weeks where like it, you have, I'm sure you have these had these weeks, man. It's like you you plan things and every single thing you plan just goes right out the freaking door you know what i mean like it should it doesn't happen <laughs> you know dragon's fun how are you thank you for that host good to see you good to see you how are things going bit of a headache yeah more often than i care to admit yeah i mean and, and it's life right like you just gotta learn to roll with it Are you... you're working, Dragon, right? Last time you were in here, I think you said you got a job? Monday, okay. Very cool. You excited? <clears throat> Written out plans are well organized checklists of everything that will go wrong. Yeah, alright. I've been making plans, Bo, and this whole week has just taught me to not do that. This whole week has just been a thorn in my side, man. And then today was just one of them days and wow so excited darn right dragon i'm glad to hear it i'm glad to hear it so we're working on this random robot thing dragon we're, we're kind of chatting more than i'm drawing so i apologize for that folks i'm sort of playing around with a uh sort of a three-dimensional perspective and uh, more of an outline art than what i typically do but just having some fun with it kind of playing around um yeah copy this guy over and break it up Ooh, no man's sky yeah i'm they've got a huge patch coming out week i know people are getting pretty hyped about that yeah you know it was funny i thought i was one of the only people i enjoyed no man's sky i mean even at release yes it had some things that needed but i still felt like i got my money's worth even at release i enjoyed the game you, you're doing it too, Dragon. I'm restarting. Yep, I'm totally restarting mine when they drop the patch. Like, I'm gonna... Um... I'm just gonna friggin... I'm just gonna... Whole new. I'm just gonna start over. I agree 100%. I just want a fresh start. We'll see. Yeah. Because apparently now they're adding, like, animal taming, and... You can, like, ride animals and all kinds of stuff. Like, what? <laughs> It's a great. I, I enjoy No Man's Sky. I know some people have beef with it, and you know that's all well and good. I, I, I enjoy it. 
one man's lie. They really have. It's one of the, to me, it is a shining example of a developer sticking with a game. And to be quite honest, when they don't even have to. I mean, they made so much freaking money on that game. They could have just been like, you know. But the way they've really sunk into it, it's good. It's a good lesson. So, and see, I'm right there with you, Dragon. I always liked the game, even at release. Yes, I saw lacking, and I saw potential, but I still enjoyed it for what it was, because there's nothing else like it. There's nothing else like No Man's Sky. Nothing. Right, and you're right, Dragon. You're 100% right. Um, there were some lies, but a lot of it was on the developer as well. It was, you know, the way I look at it like this is like this, right? That game, you know what I think that game suffered from? more than any game I've seen in a long time was hype. That game is a perfect example of what overhype can do. Right, exactly. That game suffered from massive amounts of hype that it, it I think it hit a point where it was like critical mass. You know? It was and I think it was just they bit off more than they could chew. And it just really, really just bit him in the butt. Yeah. It's a double-edged sword, right, Dragon? Because had they not taken the money from... Had they not taken the money from Sony, the game may have never even released. Right? But taking the money from Sony, they had to release it earlier than they wanted to. You know, they had to scrap some things to get it out the door. So it was just one of those, you know, unfortunate... Yeah. Yep. They were pushed. Yeah, they were. They were, absolutely. And they've been playing catch up since. But you know what? Props to them. Because, I mean, how many developers would have truly stuck that out? You know what I mean? And really made it a good game. A lot of developers would have just... They would have bought an island and moved away, you know? <clears throat> right. Right. Star Citizen. Ugh. Star Citizen makes... I will say this, because I know there's probably Star Citizen fans here. I don't like the feel of Star Citizen at all, because I don't really agree with the the way that they're sort of handling... I just don't agree with it. I think that they, they've made enough money, they, 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 they should be... I feel like there should be more progress than what there is. But I have also shut the door on Star Citizen until I see a final product. So I'm probably not the best person to ask about that because I feel like that game is suffering from a lot of different problems and so until I see a product that makes me go this is a good game I'm not interested like I don't even want to hear about it, you know what I mean because I'm just like I I I I'm just not feeling that I feel like the game either needs to come out you know and not release it early that's not what I'm saying but like I just that doesn't make me feel comfortable. Like, I've got a couple friends who have sunk big money into that game, and I'm just like, mm, I mean, I can't, I can't do it. I don't feel comfortable about it, personally. Yeah, I remember him, Dragon. Yep. The special... Ooh, okay. I bet he's glad he did now. We got a new follower. Gotcha. We got the guy... Oh, oh, cool. I've never even seen that, Dragon. Hey, Bo, thank you for the follow. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you for that support. Yeah, I'd love to see a picture of it. I never even... I never even saw a dragon. I don't even think I ever saw an actual picture of it to know what it even looked like. <laughs> yeah. So we were at 13, and then we went down under it. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, I I'll take it. Thank you, Bo. You love how those numbers fluctuate, right? Like, 
you'll hit you'll hit one you don't really celebrate those you don't really celebrate those milestones until you get well past the hump you know what i mean like what 13 probably 13 20 you know what i mean <laughs> well thank you bo i appreciate that follow the chair oh well thank you dragon i appreciate that i you know i appreciate it you know, Dragon Spun is one of the first people I met on Mixer. You were like, well, I think you were one of the very, very first. Um, I really do think so. Right, yeah, pretty much, Bo. Well, it's funny how you meet people, right? Like, when, when you first get on a platform, you try to remember, like, you, you try to remember, like, how how did I meet this person? How did I meet this person? You know what I mean? And it, it's weird. Oh, yeah, I've been growing it. I, I go through spurts. Like, I go through spurts where I grow it, and I go through spurts where I shave it. My wife, she gets mad when I shave it um, because she likes my beard. I just get to the point that I'm, I'm, I just get sick of it sometimes, and I don't want to deal with it. You know what I mean? I don't want to brush it. I don't want to wash it. So I'm just like... Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, I love a beer. Don't get me wrong. I love it. But there's days where I'm just like, nope, I don't want to deal with it. Because I have to oil it. I got to brush it. It's just, it becomes like another kid. Like, I'm taking care of another child. And it's like, meh. Except it's your face. Yeah, right. Yeah, don't be worried about that stuff, but we all have imperfections. Yeah. I got scars. I got a huge scar down the side of my head right here when I was a kid. I was spinning, and I fell and I hit my head real hard. It, like, sliced it open. I got scars. Let's go here. I'm not happy with this arm over here. What do I want to do? I don't think I want to do another arm. I don't know what I want to do. Like I'm sitting here and my brain is melting into Play-Doh. 